Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over this tower defense game freebie I'm going to be giving away to you guys. So if you want to go ahead and get it, there'll be a download link in the description below. Basically, this item has been requested and I thought I may as well put it all together so you have a almost template to go from. So if you want to use this as a basis for your game, feel free to do so. I have no problem with that. But basically, this video is going to be about going over how all of this works and how you can optimize it to fit your own games. So right here I have a grid as you can see and this grid is where I can place each turret that I add. So to show you what the game looks like, see we have two properties, money and health and three turrets which are all buttons. So this is on an overlay scene as you can see over here and so if I click on turret 1 and then hover over one of these squares that are available then a preview will pop up like so and then if I want to select my square like this one for example I can click on it and then a turret is placed and you'll notice the money has gone down by 10 so this is 10 this here is 20 and I think this one here is 50 so if I add a turret 3 and I add it over here then there we go, there's a turret added. So to spawn enemies in this game, I've assigned it to a key, that key being A. So if I press A, I'll spawn an enemy, and you can see the turret follows him and shoots at him, like that. And then when he dies, a gravestone appears. Here I can add one of these turrets in as well. Now these turrets aren't very good looking, they're just very simple mock-ups, but the main system of how it works is there. So basically how this works right here is we have our grid and this grid is where we can place our turrets. So as you'll notice if I look from the top they're slightly offset like the path goes over here and the reason for that is if I press number 0 they are fairly aligned with the ground. So the grid is actually fitted to the camera's view here and what we have here these squares are basically markers for the AI to follow or for the enemies to follow. So I'll go over to my enemy here. I've got a little zombie I made a while ago. And basically we have when he spawns in, he walks towards the marker 1. Then once he collides with marker 1, he walks towards marker 2, and so on. So we have spawn 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then that last one here is the player health. And if we hit that, then the player gets one health minus off for every zombie that hits that. So I'll show an example of this. Basically, if I spawn in lots of enemies like this, and I'll only put, say, one turret here, like that. And if they get to the finish, which should be around here, there we go, and you'll look at the health, and then game over. So that's how this all sort of works. So I thought I might go over the grid in a bit more detail. Basically on each turret placement or turret grid, I've put a Python controller and then put a mouse over, a mouse click, a three types of messages for each type of turret, depending on what the player has bought, and then a spawn, and this basically spawns in whatever turret you've bought again, then a preview, for whatever turret you want to preview or whatever turret you've bought and are hovering over and then here ends the preview once you've bought it or when you mouse off and then down here we have a place so basically when you click down this message is sent and you can't place anymore and so that is for all of these different placements as you'll notice over here if we're going to text editor there is a quick script that I wrote, so placement here, and I'll turn on the colors so it looks cool. Uh, but basically, fairly simple, just importing in some actuators here, and some sensors, and our two properties, which is used and the type. So over here, also on each of these placements, I've got acquired, which means it's being used, so you can't place anything on top of it if it's already being used. Also we have type, so what type of turret to spawn, and then here we have place, which basically means that the player can place something on it. So again, fairly simple down here, just turning properties on and off and activating some actuators. If you follow the names like spawn T, 
is up here which stands for spawn which is just this edit object here so it's fairly simple to follow along hopefully if you've played a little bit with Python now the more advanced stuff comes in for the turrets which are here and basically I used a script here this track to nearest script and this is made by Supergloop or Kendrick anyway he does a whole bunch of tutorials in the Blender game engine as well and he did this really nice and simple script for tracking to an object so I've used that copy and pasted it in and so now each of these objects has the script applied with the track to right here and then also it has a ray sensor basically detecting when an enemy is near and then shooting when that happens also the frequency on each of these ray sensors is how fast it shoots so we can see the monkey is on 13 whereas the cheapest turret is on 20 so that's how all of that works also when the zombies die here let's go down to the bottom and when the health is equal to zero then we basically just end the object and spawn in a cross which lasts for two seconds exactly okay so that is the main two layers done then over here on the overlay it gets a little bit more complicated mainly just because we have to send messages around so I'll start on here which is the main controller and this is also run on a Python script but again I just did it quite quickly and it's just checking properties activating actuators and assigning more properties so fairly simple here we have turret 1 mouse over turret 1 mouse click turret 2 mouse over turret 2 mouse click so on so forth basically here it's these sensors and then we have some visibility so if we go back to our main game go to layer 1 press numpad 0 press P and I add lots and lots of turrets and I run out of money like this you'll notice now turret 3 doesn't have a button underneath anymore and I can't click that only turret 2 and turret 1 do because they're the only ones I can afford so here if I click on turret 2 I can place one more but then no more can be placed after that turret 1 I can place one of them and then there we go no more can be placed of that either so that's what all of this is doing here basically just some visibility and invisibility sensors or actuators and then down here is types of messages to send so if you click on turret 1 and we go over here it will send type 1 and that will basically send it to scene 1 and we have on here we have a message which is either type 1, type 2 or type 3 so this depends on what the overlay scene sends so either one of these then over here we have place on which turns the property place to on which means the player can place an object down here we have some money or the fund and we have the fund here is equal to scene objects fund and yep this is actually the text object so this one right here I've called it fund and basically what I needed to do is to get this working get the property from fund from this text object here get the property text which is an integer as you can see it's called text here and then I needed to assign that to the same amount as whatever was the fund here so that's sort of how this small section here works then down here place is just assigning that and message is finding a message so if it receives the message place off which happens when the player clicks on one of the grids then it can't place anything else and place here is turned to false again here this is just checking the money and making buttons invisible and visible down here seeing whether they've clicked it or not uh, minusing 10 activating place on and sending the message type 1 and this is sending the message place on as well and activating place to true and pretty much the same for all of these and then if it receives this message right here then place is turned to off and you can't place anything else here we have a message for minus one health and then it adds minus one and then when it's equal to zero it basically sets the scene to game over which is just plain text and then 
From there, it also removes the scene main. So instead of an overlay of game over, it just switches to game over and removes the scene main. So yeah, again, corresponding with the health at the end here, we have a player health, and basically when it collides with an enemy, then it sends a message minus one health, and we have one health reduced. So I think that is about it. That's how I got this turret thing working, or tower defense working in the Blender game engine. Again, if you haven't got it already and want to go ahead and get it, there'll be a download link in the description below. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you, and hopefully the recent Python tutorials will make the scripts a bit easier to understand. If you could leave a like, comment, or share, it would be greatly appreciated, and it helps me out a lot. If you like this sort of stuff, or want more freebies, then go ahead and subscribe, or just let me know in the comments down below. But apart from that, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.